got this generator out of the garbage and didn't know what's wrong with it and don't know what's wrong with it. But the first thing I did is pulled the recoil and the spark plugs in it. There's no resistance at all. So I came down to my buddies and he said, put your face up to the carburetor. And I did that and he pulled the cord and you can feel air pushing out this way. That means you got a stuck valve, stuck intake valve. The other thing you want to check is it could be an exhaust valve and you go over to the muffler and it should be pushing air out of the muffler. If you're not pushing air out of the muffler, then you might have a bad or stuck exhaust valve. So we're going to pull it apart quick and take a look at it. Hey, Brian. It's further in there, it's not here. This is your intake valve and this is your exhaust. It's gonna have to have the head taken off of it. And then you can see whatever's wrong with the valves in there. But you think it's a valve, not a piston? Yeah, it's a valve. It's a valve. Alright. Because you got pressure, you just it's not going to the right place. And neither one is stuck, so they both got free play right there, so it's uh Maybe the valve itself's got a groove burn in it like that. Uh, if there's a valve bad, you have to pull the head off. Bad news. I got a big box stand there for scrap. <laughs> <laughs> so if you run into this, you're looking at buying something or maybe even fixing something, the first thing you want to do is check and see if you've got compression. If you got no compression like this, you've either got a bad piston or broken rings or a bad valve. And I'm gonna pull this apart real quick for you so we can see what actually is wrong with this. Good thing I asked you. Pull this off. Take it off. Oh. Valve seats and valves look all right. Yeah. That's the exhaust. Mm -hmm. 
valve seat. Yeah, the valve seat's good. That's the intake side. Yep. So the head's looking all right. Yep. I don't understand why it didn't have any compression unless this derringer were out on this. Was that piston sloppy in there? No, it's not bad either. So the rings should be good? Yep. I believe you're losing the compression right here. See right here where this dark place is? Yeah. Look at this gasket, how it's pushed out right here. You see how this gasket's narrow right here? And it's pushed out right there. Oh yeah. I think it may be the gasket. You may be able to put a gasket on this thing and fix it. So just a head gasket maybe. It was sealed on the bottom side, but it looks like it's blowing by on the top side. See how narrow it is right here? Yeah. And then you go right here and it's pushed out flat. Yeah. And it looks like the air's been blowing by on the top side. You put a $15 head gasket on it. If it don't run, you're not out for $15. Yeah. Look like you need a little black there, but it probably quit all at once. It lost compression all at once. Checking the valves for leaks. Just pour a little gas in there and it should hold. I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to release this valve just a little bit and you can watch gas come out here. Oh yeah. So it's sealed good. Good. Both of them seal good. They're, the valves are good. Need a head gasket. Back to the drawing board. Order a head gasket. I'm gonna go through this part quick, but I'd just like to clean up the top of the piston and the head that I've got in here. And to do that, I'm gonna use the brass brush or maybe the nylon, but you wanna be real careful not to scratch that too much. This steel is too abrasive. Got the new head gasket. So we're all ready to go with that. And it's a perfect match. Actually got this from the cat dealer. It was uh, $4. If I ordered online, it was $16. So sometimes it pays to get local. Look good. And now we'll clean up the head. Take it from this to this. Now when you're putting the head back on with the new head gasket, I'm going to use a torque wrench. It calls for 30 foot-pounds for these four bolts. I'm going to tighten them in a crisscross pattern, and I'm going to gradually take it in to tighten it down, and eventually it'll click at 30 foot-pounds. You don't want to over-tighten it. You can bust the aluminum head, or under-tighten, of course, you can get a leak. All right, we'll check the valves. These get adjusted to five thousandths, both the intake and exhaust. So I'm gonna find top dead center when both of these are closed. So the valve lash will be set when both valves, intake and exhaust are closed at top dead center. 
exhaust is open there. I think that's it right there. Where the piston's at the top, and both valves are closed. We'll check the valve lash there. I've just got a four and a six, so I'm going to do a soft four. Feels good right there. It's a little loose there. So I'm going to loosen this nut. And turn the screw down. There I can feel it scraping a little bit. And I'm going to keep an eye on the orientation of that. It is squared off at the end. So the flat edge is here and here. I'm just going to make sure that stays there. It's still there. Still there. It's still a soft four thousandths. Soft four. And the six won't go in unless I force it. So that's good. Put our spark plug back in. We'll put it back together. Well, I've got the cover off. Might as well clean up the magnet on the flywheel. And I'm going to check the gap on the magneto. And that seems good. And we'll put the recoil back on. I'm just going to spray a little starting fluid in there and see if it'll pop. I don't know if we have enough compression. How about that? Well, let's put it back together the rest of the way and give it a test. Let's see if she'll run. <laughs> well, how about that? I think the carburetor needs some cleaning, so I'm going to pop that off and uh, clean it up and see if that'll fix it. It'll be handy to have a generator in case I ever need it in an emergency, so I'm thankful for that. If this video was a help to you, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing. I'm looking forward to helping you with other projects. I'm fine.